Feel the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. Welcome to the ever-increasing word feast right here on Facebook or YouTube, whichever social media platform you're watching from today. Abel Damina is my name. There is a mandate of God on my life to reintroduce Jesus to this generation, equipping the believer to know who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. That's what this broadcast is all about today. So get ready to unlearn so you can relearn the truths concerning the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me also advise you in the course of teaching, certain questions may arise. Just be patient, pay attention, and listen carefully. Because scriptures will interpret scriptures as you patiently follow the teaching of God's word. You know, the Bible tells us that the time shall come when people shall not endure sound doctrine. So sound doctrine is to be endured. So endure. You know, the word of God also tells us that with meekness, you receive the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul with meekness. So there's a meekness required and there's endurance required where sound doctrine is concerned. So as the teaching of God's word begins to come, get your notebook, get your pen, follow the teachings. Most of my teachings are in this series because we take time to holistically look at subject matters in the light of Jesus Christ. Let me encourage those of you that are connecting for the first time today, get ready to keep following. We are right here on Facebook and YouTube every day. We're here at 12 noon, GMT plus one. We're here at 6 p.m. We're here at 10 p.m. every day. You don't want to miss any of them because all of these times that I've mentioned, they are designed to equip you with sound knowledge of Jesus Christ. In the midst of a world of uncertainties, with all kinds of messages of fear going all over, you need to stock up, you need to feed yourself with the truth of the gospel so you're rooted and grounded and not moved to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Two more things to introduce to you today. If you are in a city where there is no church, Christ-centered church, where they teach the message of Christ, it is not good for you to be in isolation. The Bible says God has set the solitary in families. God wants you to be a part of a local assembly, a gathering of believers where you can pray together, learn the word of God together, and effectively serve one another and go out to the world and bring the gospel of Christ. If you want to join any of our campuses around the world today, or you want to start one in your own locality and be the lighthouse in that community, all you need to do is shoot me a mail today telling me about your desire to either be a part of a campus or to start one with your location and your phone number. We will get in touch with you and help you either begin one or identify with an existing one. The last thing is I have a lot of books like you can see them displayed on the screen. All of these are resources written painstakingly to equip you answer your questions and bring you clarity of explanation of the word of God. And if you want to order for any or all of the books today, all you need to do again is shoot a mail to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com and we'll respond to you properly and give you all the information you require to acquire these books. I'm excited, very excited. In friend tag somebody create a watch party, but today is going to be a powerful time of teaching you the word of his grace. Fasting your seatbelts as I take you on a gospel adventure into the service where the spirit of our God is already moving. Happy view. Amen. We began to deal with a number of things that has to do with the revelation of God as it goes beyond superstition. The accurate, exact, precise revelation of who God is. Who is God? That's what we're dealing with. How do I know God? How do I see God? very important and we say there's no way to know God and see God other than in his word and we said his word is a person the word of God is a person in the beginning was the word the word was with God the word was God and the word became flesh and dwelt among us so the word of God is a person the person of the Christ the word was God. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. We beheld the glory of God. We beheld God. We saw God in Christ. God became a man to relate with man so man can know God in a man. There's nothing complicated about that. 
God became a man so he can relate with man so man can know God in Christ. God wants man to know God in man. No complications. Makes the equation very easy. And then we began to talk about the woman at the well in John chapter 4. The Samaritan woman who met with Jesus. And they began to talk about physical well, physical water. And Jesus began to change the tone of the discourse. From well, he brought her to a well that shall be in you, springing up to everlasting life. And then the woman began to challenge Jesus and said, In this mountain shall you worship. And Jesus said to her, No, no, woman. It has never been the will of God ever that people should worship in a location. He said, and I tell you, woman, the time cometh and now is. So now they have left the issue of well. They have moved into the issue of worship. The woman was talking about God. Jesus was talking about a father. The time cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the father in spirit and in truth. John chapter 4 verse 21. Jesus said unto her, woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the father. You worship, you know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. Or salvation came from the Jews. Talking about the coming of Jesus. Verse 23. But the hour cometh and now is. When the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. The Father seeketh such to worship him. So automatically Jesus places a disclaimer on temple worship he places a disclaimer on the worship in the temple at jerusalem and then he began to talk about the fact that true worship is seeing god as father that is true worship worship of the father never happened in the temple never because that was not god's plan that was not god's purpose but of course under the law since it was shadows the people were using the temple to worship but that was never god's delight God's delight has always been that true worship will be a relationship between man and God. And where man can be able to call God Father. Philippians chapter 3 verse 3. We are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit. And rejoice in Christ Jesus. And have no confidence in the flesh. We are the circumcision that is the inward court. By the sword of the spirit that gave birth to a relationship between man and god and our worship is not just you know dancing and singing our worship is spiritual we worship god in the spirit spiritual worship is a relationship between a son and a father if you see god other than a father you are not in true worship god is a spirit and they that worship god must worship god in spirit and in the reality of him being a father so our worship of God therefore becomes worship when it is relational. When it is relational. When it is family relational. You cannot worship God except you are his son. God does not receive worship from strangers. God does not receive worship from superstitious people. He receives worship from his sons. Those who know him as a father. So that takes away the bondage again to fear. And it takes away demands and obligation. Because a father and a son does not have demand and obligation. A father and a son simply has a relationship. When you begin to worship God as a father, all demands and obligation are taken away. So now you have received the spirit of liberty. Where you worship God as your father. No rules, no regulations, no protocol. This is your father. You are not worshipping a boss. You are not worshipping a village head. You are not worshipping a traditional ruler. He does not need pet names. He is your father. And the spirit that gave back to you called the spirit of adoption. When that spirit came on your inside, that spirit taught you to relate with God. And he said that spirit in your heart cries, Abba Father. So our relationship with God is father son. No bondage, no demands, no obligations. Can somebody shout hallelujah? So Jesus puts a total disclaimer on the Old Testament practices. He takes away from their mind the Old Testament practices. He told the woman, it shall not be in this mountain anymore. No more temple worship. The time cometh, now is the time. It has begun already. When true worshippers shall no more go to Jerusalem, the worship shall be in spirit and in truth. So the father 
becomes the example for us to see the father himself becomes the example for us to copy because god wants you to know him as a father but you cannot know him as a father until he reveals himself to you so god puts on flesh comes down as a man so man can see god then as a man he exemplifies what you are supposed to be like he exemplifies how you're supposed to function he exemplifies how you're supposed to operate how did he do that now remember if you miss jesus you miss god to know god you must know christ because god is revealed in christ so christ exemplifies the father or christ exemplifies the relationship that the father expects the sons to reflect so pay attention matthew chapter 6 verse 12 and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors there's a translation issue there it is not forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors it is forgive us our debts that we may forgive our debtors it is forgive us our debts as an example so the way you forgive us we can use your yardstick to forgive our debtors that's the way it is put in the original so you forgive as your heavenly father not so that your heavenly father you forgive as your heavenly father you do not forgive so that your heavenly father so in our worship of god we worship the father very important we are not worshiping god we are worshiping our father matthew eleven twenty five. at that time jesus answered and said i thank thee O father lord of heaven and earth because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and has revealed them unto babes so this revelation of the father is revealed to babes when he was speaking he was speaking about people that were not to be called a people but he had already accepted them into the kingdom as sons and sometimes when the word babes is used it is a relational word luke 23 34 then said jesus father forgive them for they know not what they do and they parted his raiment and cast lots even at the point of death he didn't forgive as they forgave he forgave because he was exemplifying god god does not forgive you because you forgive others god forgives you because he forgives he forgives you because he is an example for you to copy so the same way he has forgiven you you are supposed to forgive others so he forgives you first so that you can learn how to forgive others it's not trying to say if you don't forgive i will not forgive you the father wasn't forgiving because we asked he was forgiving because it is a gift that's why in luke chapter 4 verse 18 the spirit of the lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance the word deliverance is the greek word aphesis a-p-h-e-s-i-s aphesis it means forgiveness of sins to preach forgiveness of sins forgiveness of sins was a message the forgiveness of sins was not a reward the forgiveness of sins is not an answer to prayer that is why jesus said he has been anointed to preach it because the forgiveness of sin is a message to preach aphesis the word deliverance is the word aphesis it's not demons crying on the floor it's not people vomiting and crawling on the floor that's not bible deliverance bible deliverance is the greek word aphesis it means forgiveness so when your sins are forgiven you are delivered when your sins are forgiven that is bible deliverance to preach and the forgiveness of sin is a message that is what we preach the forgiveness of sins look at acts 13 38 be it known unto you therefore men and brethren that through this man is preached unto you what 
the forgiveness of sins through this man is preached Ephesus English language has only existed for about 800 years so English language is young compared to Greek so when the Bible was written the language that was there then was Greek Aramaic, which Jesus spoke and Hebrew there was no English the Bible was not written in English the language Jesus spoke was not English all the communications that were carried out was not English it was in Hebrew for the Old Testament Greek for the New Testament and Aramaic while Jesus was on earth so the original language of communication were these languages English only translated from a language to another and sometimes in translating a language if the other language doesn't have enough ingredients like the original language you lose certain details it's like your own native language there are ways you can express yourself in your dialect that you cannot in English English is too limited for you who English is not your original language it limits you in expression so because it limits you in expression sometimes you have to go back to your language if you really want to explain it and it will take more words to explain what english limited so when english was first introduced when the king james and other translations were translated from the greek and the hebrew and aramaic the english then was very young that's why sometimes you see words like verily, verily, hitato. Those are old English at the inception of English. Now it has grown to a level and it is still growing by the day. So that's why sometimes we go to the Greek and the Hebrew so we don't miss certain ingredients, which is the responsibility of a man of God to do the study and feed you with all you need to understand what the intent of the author was because remember the bible can never mean today what it never meant when it was first written so we must go to find out what it meant when it was first written for adequate bible interpretation so that's why we take time to go to the root words words like aphesis deliverance is aphesis deliverance in no way is rolling on the floor deliverance in no way is screaming nah, nah, nah. no that's not deliverance deliverance is aphesis that's the original word it means forgiveness of sin that's why jesus called it a preaching forgiveness of sin is preach i'm anointed to preach deliverance not to pray deliverance to preach so there is nothing like deliverance crawling on the floor, vomiting and rolling on the floor. No, no. That is casting out of devils, which is different from deliverance. The difference is we can cast out devils from a man, but the man is not born again. The man, the demons can leave him and the man can stand up and say, what happened to me? Okay, I don't want to be a Christian demons come back they will come back jesus said it when an unclean spirit is cast out he goes about dry places seeking for a place of rest and find that none he says i will go back to my house where i came out from he said and if he comes back the house is empty he will invite other demons they will come back because that man is not delivered why is he not delivered he's not born again he has not received the forgiveness of sins but a man cannot be delivered and be possessed by demons a man cannot be delivered and possessed with demons demons are darkness jesus is light how can light be in a house and darkness drive light out it's not possible rather darkness will be in a house when light enters darkness goes out i'm teaching here so that a man's demons are cast out doesn't automatically means he's born again but once a man gets born again all the demons vacate the premises because a new landlord has taken over the house somebody's not shouting hallelujah so deliverance is preached being delivered from sin is aphesis because the king james of the 1611 translation 
was the early development of english luke 5 20 and when he saw their faith he said unto him man man thy sins are what what is that that's preaching that's aphesis that's preaching he didn't pray for the man he preached it to the man a particular group of friends had a friend that was bedridden in a two by four stretcher so they carried him because he was bedridden he couldn't walk they carried him but when they came to where jesus was doing a teaching service like this the hall was packed there was no place to enter every of us packed plus doors and windows there was no way to bring their friend even they themselves couldn't enter talk more of carrying a man on a stretcher so they now said our friend must be healed today they took a ladder and climbed to the roof of the building removed the roofing sheet only people that are desperate and have believed can do that kind of thing. Open the roofing sheet around where Jesus is sitting. Then in the two by four stretcher, they now use ropes and drop the man from up in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith in action, he stood up and said, man, your sins are forgiven. That means the forgiveness of sin is more fundamental than healing what they brought the man for was healing what he gave the man first was the forgiveness of sins that's why when the disciples went out and cast out demons and the demons obeyed them and they came back and said jesus the demons were subject to us through your name and they were happy jesus said in this rejoice not don't be happy that demons obeyed you it's natural if demons don't obey you then you're not born again if you are born again it is natural for demons to see you and obey much more when you give them instruction it is not an exercise of come out i will not come out how many of you 15 i say come out i will not come out fire fire yeah 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 come out i will not come out fire fire yeah 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 okay we're going out come out how many of you have come out 13 of us how many did you say you are 200 Ice. no that is not what we're talking about that one is entertainment service you know many churches have an entertainment service thousands are gathered to hear the word of god but everybody's waiting for one girl that is doing drama so everybody who came came to waste their time because that day the only place where god is working is on one girl that is busy giving different figures and people like entertainment because their lives are boring jesus said don't rejoice that demons obeyed you is a natural heritage of sons this side shall follow those that believe in my name they shall what cast out devils he said but rejoice rather that's where rejoicing should come from rejoice rather that your names are written in the book of life because that is final that is final rejoice that your names are written in the book of life so he looked at him and said man your sins he gave him the gift of forgiveness he preached aphesis to the man but what the man came for was not aphesis he came for healing but jesus gave him aphesis meaning once your sins are forgiven no sickness has the audacity to remain in your body once you have received forgiveness you can as well be healed am i teaching good here yeah gaba jakaya now the next verse and the scribes and the pharisees began to reason saying who is this which speaketh blasphemy who can forgive sins but god alone so they have agreed that anybody that can forgive sins is god but when jesus perceived their thoughts he answered and said unto them what is in your heart whether it's easier to say that sins be forgiven thee or to say rise up and walk they function within the same compartment the same power that forgives heals so if your sins are forgiven healing is available to you you don't need fasting for healing eh, eh. Agiba tona. the same power called eternal life inside you heals your body next verse but that you may know that the son of man had power upon earth to forgive sins he said unto the sick of the person that you may know that when i forgive it is forgiven the evidence of forgiveness is rise up and walk meaning once you are forgiven healing is natural you didn't hear that 
he didn't say that you may know that the son of man has power to forgive sin and to heal but that you may know that the son of man had power upon earth to forgive sins basic he said unto the sick i say unto thee arise and take up thy couch and go into your house and immediately he rose up before them and took up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house glorifying god once your sins are forgiven even before your sins are forgiven you can receive healing much more after your sins are forgiven sickness has no right to survive the body of a believer no except you are ignorant of the provisions of redemption he forgave the guy and by forgiving him the man got healed Ephesus, the preaching of forgiveness the man didn't ask for forgiveness did he ask for forgiveness but it was given him because forgiveness is a gift forgiveness is not a reward it's a gift of grace somebody say very loud forgiveness is a gift of grace now say by the gift of grace my sins are eternally forgiven i thought i would hear a living amen luke 7 48 and he said unto her thy sins are forgiven he said because forgiveness is a message he said it he preached it your sins are forgiven it wasn't a prayer point it was his offer to, to the man now let's examine something here because we're dealing with god's character luke chapter 6 verse 38 give and it shall be given unto you and because of this scripture god has been misrepresented another superstition about god has been communicated to the world through luke 6 38 because of lack of proper interpretation because a man can defend a lie with his life even though the lie he's defending has never benefited him the lie he's defending has never made him better but he can die in the defense of a lie that's why wrong knowledge that's why jesus said take it what you hear very careful very careful what you're taught so this scripture has sold a lot of superstition to the church because of lack of proper interpretation so let's decode it give and it shall be given unto you so people say if you say god does not bless us when we give didn't the bible say give and it shall it gives you an impression that when you give to god then god gives to you that is superstition that is not god that is not my god maybe that is a god you have created in the figment of your imagination but not my father not the father of our lord jesus christ no so pay attention give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down shaking together and run it over shall men give into your bosom for with the same measure that you made with all it shall be measured to you again rule of interpreting scripture pretext post text context we read the previous because the bible is written contextually so let's read it contextually from verse 27 but i say unto you which hear love your enemies do good to them which hate you they don't love you love them do good to them that hate you it doesn't look like love me i love you it doesn't look like give me i give you it looks like you didn't give me i gave you bless them that curse you that doesn't look like give and it shall be given that look like opposites is that opposite and pray for them which despitefully use you and unto him that smited thee on one cheek offer also the other and him that taketh away thy cloak forgive not to take thy coat also give to every man that accept of thee and of him that taketh away thy goods ask them not again and as you would that men should do to you do you also to them likewise now pay attention something has changed as you want men to do to you do to them if you want them to give to you give to them which class of people men the previous verses we read is talking about god and god's character that even when you don't give him he gives to you and for you to be like him if they curse you bless if they take away add to them 
That's God. Now he has moved from God's level to man. So where men are concerned, what you want man to do to you, do to him because that's the way men operate. And as you would that men should do to you, do you also to them likewise. For if you love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. It is sinners that give only to those who gives to them. And God is not a sinner. So God cannot be in the category of you have to give me first before I give to you. God is not in the category of $91 for 91 blessings from Psalm 91. If you have to give to get, you're not better than sinners. That is how they even operate. Okay? And if you lend to them of whom you hope to receive, what thank have you? But love you, your enemies. Love you, your enemies. Have we seen that man is, I give, you give. Okay? Now, he has left men. He has come back again to God. But love you, your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again. When God gives you a house, he's not expecting you to give him back. He gives and gives. That's God's operation. And if you're going to function like God, when you give, expect nothing. And your reward shall be great. And you shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. So when somebody tells you, when praises go up, that's another superstition. It is because blessing came down. That's why we praise. Our praise is not to bring blessing. Our praise is a response to the blessings we have received. That you may be the children of your father. He gives you unthankful. Some say if you don't thank God, your tank will not be full. It's a lie. That's another superstition. It is because your tank is full. That is why you thank God. So anybody who is telling you that if you don't thank God, your tank will not be full is a superstitious communication of God. Away with the superstition. Is rumor. Be therefore merciful, as your father also is merciful. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. This is another realm. He has come back to man's level, and I'll prove it to you next verse. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down shaking together running over shall this is man's level that is if you want men to give to you give but if it is god whether you give or not he has given oh, we have to clear that we have to clear that so you don't give to be blessed you give because you are already blessed you give because he has already done it. And if you don't understand that, you can carry on with your head ignorantly worshipping God. God is not a man. And God doesn't reason that way. So some ideas of God that the church has embraced is coming out of superstition. And some of these ideas, people carry it into their marriage, transfer it to their children. Your child does something wrong. Kneel down. Carry your Bible, put on your head. God hates people that do evil. You are misrepresenting God. You are misrepresenting God. Then you tell him to sing a song with Bible on his head. I will never steal from my mother's pot. <laughs> tell lies to daddy. Beat up my younger ones. Okay. I will never. I am in the Lord. Which kind of stupid Lord I mean is that? <laughs> <laughs> you 
kneeling down with Bible on his head. Eh? You are making that boy hate God. You are painting a wicked God to him. A God that cannot even afford to lose one meat. You are not hearing what I'm teaching. You are telling the boy that God is so stingy that even if you take one meat, he will kill you. He will follow you and collect that meat. And then you say, I am in the lost army. <laughs> I am in the lost army. Yes, sir. <laughs> With Bible on his head. Superstition. God is not man. Therefore, he does not have vengeance in his reasoning. And some people even take it to their marriage. They take it to their marriage. Especially when they're in a church that is very judgmental. You are a sister here, you committed three abortions. How do you expect yourself to be pregnant? No wonder you have married and up to now you don't have a child. Already creating suspicion between husband and wife. Making the husband to start wondering, this is my wife. How do I even confirm whether she committed abortion or not? Maybe we have to start checking some things. Where there was peace, tension has started creating from the message of a pastor. You committed abortion. How do you think you can be pregnant? As if God is so vindictive. Meanwhile, God says your sins and iniquities, I will remember them again no more. I will be merciful. Kayataya. Mercy denies you judgment. So husband and wives, their marriage is full of tension because of wrong message. Wrong message. And the woman, because of guilt, becomes difficult for her to take in guilt brings tension tension disorganizes the system tension brings imbalance tension steers up confusion in her body all kinds of hormones of fear are injected into the body so that it is difficult for there to be conception fear condemnation guilt coming out of a wrong message wrong representation of God and that's why we have to correct every impression so that we can see God for who he is and enjoy ourselves with God and the rest will be history somebody's not shouting hallelujah lift your right hand and shout I know God in Christ say it very loud I know God in Christ what is not in Christ is not in God to know God I know Christ so I know God by looking at Christ. I didn't hear a powerful amen. Kapatoke Batanaka. Colossians chapter 2 verse 18. Let no man beguile you of your reward. In a voluntary humility. And worshipping of angels. Intruding into those things which he had not seen. Vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Let no man beguile you. See what Paul calls the law. He calls the law worshipping of angels. The law is a worship of angels. So if you are seeing God through the law, you are worshipping angels. Anyone that approaches God on the basis of legalism is an angel worshipper. He calls it worshipping of angels. Let nobody take you captive by the worship of angels and not holding the head you have left the head and you are now into voluntary worship of angels you have left Christ you are romancing angels how? by the law how do we know that the law is the worship of angels Hebrews chapter 2 verse 2 for if the word spoken by angels what word was spoken by angels? the law which word was spoken by angels? The law. The law was not given by God. The law was given by angels. So when you use the law as your access to God, you are in angel worship. You are in angel worship. Worshiping of angels. The law was given by angels. Angels didn't preach salvation. 
Angels preach retaliation. An eye for an eye, a tooth. Because angels don't have emotion. When they are in administration, you will see their operational method. Acts chapter 7 verse 35. This Moses, whom they refused saying, who made thee a ruler and a judge, the same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. The angel. Look at that Acts 7 verse 51. He is stiff, naked, and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them, which showed before the coming of the just one, of whom you have been now the betrayers and murderers. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it? How did they receive the law? By the disposition of angels. So, angels gave the law when you approach god on the basis of the law it is angel worship that's what brother paul was referring to there in colossians 2 18 let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels trying to be pious because you're keeping a few of the laws you feel important and in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 18, look at the way brother Paul will put it. For you are not come unto the mount that might be touched and that burn with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest. There's a mountain that was burning with fire, with blackness and darkness and tempest. There's a mountain like that. Because that mountain was where the law was given. When it comes to the law, it is intimidating. It is fairy. And Paul says, that is called the worship of angels. Angelus tescare. That's the Greek. The worship of angels. So the Lord declares everybody guilty. Romans 3, 19 to 20. Now, we know that what things soever the Lord saith, is saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and that all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sins. Before the law came, God declared Abraham righteous without the law. That is God's will. God's will is righteousness devoid of works or righteousness without the law. That's God's plan for man. God's plan for man is that man can relate with God on the righteous standards of God. How? Through the gospel. The word was preached to them as well as unto us. The one that was preached to them, they didn't profit them. They didn't receive the gospel. When they didn't receive the gospel, Moses gave them the law. Since I'm giving you the gospel of Christ, you are rejecting the gospel. Moses kept the gospel to himself and gave them the law. Because they didn't want Christ. They didn't want the gospel of Christ. Hallelujah. So righteous men are those who believe the gospel. And that was the issue in Sodom. The issue in Sodom and Gomorrah was that Sodom and Gomorrah rejected the gospel. They rejected the gospel. The gospel was given to the Sodomites. They rejected the gospel. And when you reject the gospel, what happens? You end in hell. When you reject the good news of Christ, you end in hellfire. That was the issue with Sodom and Gomorrah. And that's why Romans chapter 10 verse 5. For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which do it. The righteousness of the law is about doing something. Next verse. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh. The righteousness of faith speaketh. You hear the message, you believe, you confess. You're righteous. The law, you do something. And if you break one, you break all. Somebody says, are you sure Moses gave them Jesus? Yes. Moses gave them Christ. They rejected Christ. Ah. Where did Moses give them Christ? Moses said to them, I set before you life and death. I set before you life and death. What is life? The spirit of life in Christ Jesus. What is death? The law of sin and death. And they went for the law of sin and death. He gave them Christ. They refused Christ. 
So he said, okay, since you don't want Christ, I, Moses, I keep Christ to myself. Take the law. It's man. Oh, you kept hearing Jesus saying, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, gave you the law. It's not because that's my plan. Since he gave you what was available, you refused. So he kept it to himself and fabricated something for you because since human beings like to do something and feel like they have done something. Some pastors know that if they don't ask you to fast till your mouth is dry, you don't believe that God is in the church. So they give you 100 days fasting. So that as you are fasting, you'll be feeling that you are doing something. Then when you gather, they make you pray, clap your hands, shake your head, stamp your feet. Because man likes to do something. So they say, okay, human psychology. Let us keep Christ to ourselves. These human beings, they are very wonderful. Let's become tax masters. So while you are fasting, some of them are eating. They, are eating. they clean their mouth, they come. Your own mouth is dry. Since you don't want grace, take law. Moses didn't give them law because he was wicked. It's the hardness of their heart. That is what they preferred. You know what I mean now? Huh? My yoke is easy. I will not follow you and do what you want. I give you Christ. I give you Christ. I give you Christ. They will give them prayer book. Every 12 midnight, wake up. Throughout these 30 days of fasting, you must pray 12 to 3. Anything short of 12 to 3, witches will scratch you. They will put on them fear and they will put on them judgment on top and license evil spirits to make sure that if they disobey something, evil spirits have a freedom to deal with them because they are under their spiritual authority. So because they have told them, if you don't pray for those three hours, they will scratch you. I'm telling you, they will scratch them. Since the pastor is the authority over everyone, he has used his authority to create a door for evil spirits to have direct access. Ah, pastor, didn't I warn you? Say, oh, he's a man of God. If my pastor says something, you must obey him. So you begin to respect the man of God instead of respecting God. You don't see God anymore, you see the man. If pastor walks in and goes, you, yes, sir. Yes, sir. some call themselves prophet. You know how they do their prophecy? They will book counseling for all of you. They will give all of you form. They will ask for your name, your phone number, your house address, then your problem. When you are finished counseling in the morning, then they come for prophetic service in the evening. It is what you put in your form that they will memorize. Then when you come, they will call your phone number. They will tell you your problem. Then they will tell you things about you. You, are, hey, hey, you already gave them information in the morning. It's just that they're intelligent. They can memorize things very fast. Moses told them, take Christ. They said, no. He said, no problem. No argument. Christ, stay in my house. 612 laws. Take Israel is struggling with laws that God is not aware of. They are struggling to keep law that God doesn't even know. They are working hard under the law. God is not even aware of it. Angels are busy carrying out activity among them. You break power. You don't keep it power. Angels are into full operation. God is not aware because that's not God's will for man. They rejected what Moses gave them. So Moses said, you people are too many. If I don't give you something, there will be chaos. Christ, stay in my house. Take law. Eye for eye. Toot for toot. Leg for leg. Ear for ear. Just, and if you break one, you break all. Don't wear cloth with different colors. Don't eat fish with scale. Don't build house with balcony. Ha. The laws are increasing. Are you following? So he is tying them tougher till they are so tired that they cannot feel free. They can't feel free anymore. And any mistake, angels are carrying Koboko and following them. Small mistake, fear. No mercy, no grace. Some people like that kind of life. But when we now begin to say, you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but adoption, instead of you to be grateful for what God has done, and out of love for what God has done, respond to him better. Then you want to be callous. Many you prefer the law to grace. The law 
law was not God's best. Jesus said it, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, he, Moses, gave you the law. That's why the law is called the law. Exactly. The one Moses that formed. That's why Jesus said, do not think that I will accuse you before my father. I'm not there. There is one who will accuse you. It is Moses, the man that all of you trust. That's the man killing you. Me, I don't have a hand in it. I'm not the one that sent Moses. I'm not the one that gave him the law. Moses sat down and gave you. I give you Christ. I say, I give you Christ. Hey. Throughout the epistles, you will never see the epistles refer to God as God. The epistles always refer to God as Father. Pata. That's the a, that's a word. Pata. Pata means source. The source of everything. Pata means my source. That means everything I have came from him. Pata. In Matthew 19.3. The Pharisees also came to him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And he said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twin shall be one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more twin, but one flesh. What therefore God are joined together, let no man put asunder. This is God's will for man. Next verse. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? This is Moses now. Next verse. He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But in the will of God, it was not so if it was not so it is not so it will never be so jesus the same yesterday today and forever it's moses it's moses he gave you permission to put away your wives that's not my mind the greek word for that was this is response to men the hardness of the heart is Postones calorocardia. Cardia there is heart because of the hardness of your heart. It was not so in the beginning. So when I saw your heart, that's what Moses said. When I saw your heart, I gave you law. The hardness of your heart towards the gospel. He suffered you to put away your wives. Kabayata. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached and as well as unto them them who them israel the same people they gave law before they gave them law the same gospel preached to us was preached to them but they didn't mix faith they didn't believe in the gospel so because they didn't believe in the gospel they died in unbelief unbelief to the gospel but we which believe, we have entered. If you have entered, stand up and shout, I have entered rest. Somebody shout, I have entered rest. Say with me very loud, I'm a believer. I believe in the gospel. I, uh, I'm not hearing your voices. I'm a believer. I believe in the gospel. I believe in the grace of God. I believe in the finished work of Christ. I believe that Jesus died, was buried, and on the third day rose again for my justification. Say, I believe that Jesus' yoke is easy and his burden is light. Now, can I hear a louder amen? amen? Say, I believe that when I pray, he has answered. I receive when I pray, and I have when i receive say when i pray i receive now turn to somebody tell him if you don't want to receive don't ask me to pray because every time i pray i receive 
This is the confidence that we have in him. That whatever we ask in accordance with his will. What is the will of God? Christ. Christ is the will of God. So when I ask in Christ, he heareth me. And if he heareth me, then I have my desired petition. Kabayata. Lift your right hand and say very loud, Father, I thank you that you hear me always. Now go ahead and give him thanks for another 30 seconds, everybody. Zazo kolodobo shakaya naganga. Go ahead and give him thanks. Mengrandongro sukla namanga. Egereto suka lada babre de giga yanaka. Yana koroto suka lada baba. Mentoro to suka lada baba. Rekuske le minga nganango goroto sekila. Just thank him for eternal life. Thank him for the forgiveness of your sins. Thank him that your name is written in the book of life. Thank him that you have a future with him. Thank him that he lives in you. Agabo shita lada baba ba. Thank him that his life is working in you. Ora bode shikele de maso. Membrandongro de bo sukele de baba. Begin to thank him for revelation knowledge. Begin to thank him that superstition is gone. Begin to thank him that the clarity of God is coming to your understanding. Open your mouth and give him thanks. Babo roto sukele de bajo koro de bo sotale de maha. Just stretch your hands towards this. Let's begin to thank God for interventions. Let's begin to thank God for testimonies. Let's begin to thank God for answers. Let's begin to thank God for answers. 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 Answers for yourself. Answers for the millions around the world. Answers for everybody that has sent a request to this house of grace. Let's begin to thank God for solutions. Let's begin to thank God for direction. Let's begin to thank God for solutions. Let's begin to thank God for direction. Mangra to sukele de bajakaya. Ile bazo kula na mamangre de bozekele de boska. Rako toli barakita nagila na maso toli na magada gadeya. Gadeya, 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 gadeya. Mambra do zekele de baba babara ta sikele de boska daya. Mangra nda gele de bosa tile de bababa. Engere de giga la baloko lobo suta le namra. Nangra nda gile de boshokoro de bosuta le nababa. Mambra to sikele de baya. Father, we thank you for answers. Thank you for miracles. Thank you for floodgates. Thank you for open doors. Thank you for connections. Thank you for supplies. Thank you for healings. Thank you for miracles. Thank you for increase. Thank you for the blessing. Thank you, oh God, for ideas. Thank you for concepts. Thank you for insights. Thank you for marriages. Thank you for childbirth. Thank you for enlargement. Rakoske balada bamba nenga ningra nonga seke ega joka renga rota siba raka ninga elebo jakia 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 Elebo Zakia, Elebo Zakaya na Mahota Lareba. Thank you, my father. In the name of Jesus. Can I get that amen on a note of finality? We're going to pray and command the devil to take his hands off. His hands off the bodies of God's people, his hands off the businesses of God's people, of careers of God's people, of marriages of God's people. We command the devil to take his hands off, off of God's people's properties. Command him to take his hands off. Cast him out, out of God's people's bodies, out of God's people's businesses and homes. Stretch your hands and take authority. Exercise your authority. Meshakota Belita, Belita, every demonic hold every unclean spirit every satanic interference every satanic manipulation every satanic setup every satanic setup every workings of the devil every agent and agency of darkness every satanic installation every working of the devil in the hearts of men to produce results that are not pleasant every spirit of hell and every interference of the devil in the lives of men men that have sent in requests wherever the devil has taken advantage of the ignorance of god's people wherever the devil has taken advantage of the ignorance of god's people you demonic host you satanic interferers satan i serve you a notice by the finished work of christ i command you get your hands off 
of the businesses of God's people, of their careers, of their marriages, of their homes, of their dreams, of their visions, of their jobs. Satan, get your hands off. You spirit of infirmity, get out. You spirit of disease, get out. You spirit of oppression, lose your holes. I break your holes. I lose God's people. I lose their bodies. I lose their jobs. I lose their career. I lose their businesses. I lose. I lose. I lose. Metalo taberi katana. Hey, jo 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 jo. Kora tonenga. Kora tonenga, kora tonenga, kora tonenga, kora tonenga. Zezi zazozo, zezi zazozo zozo, zezi zazazazaza. Hega batona katala, baraka baraka. Hega bayada, 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 hega bayada. Hila mano sita la raba. In the name of Jesus. If you believe it is done, let me hear that amen on a note of finality. Amen. Now we're going to call the things that be not as though they were. Begin to call for homes. Begin to call for marriages. Begin to call for businesses. Begin to call for money. Begin to call for connections. Supernatural help. Begin to call for ideas, concepts. Begin to call for employments, admissions, promotions. Open your mouth and begin to call. Call the things that be not as though they were. Call them for yourself. Then begin to call them for everyone that has sent in a request into this house of Greece. Maroko Tula de Bajoka. I call forth marriages. I call forth fruit of the womb. I call forth jobs. I call forth career. I call forth graduation. I call forth admissions. I call forth employment. I call forth favor. I call forth favor. Every court case, I command favor to settle the matter. Every court case, I command favor to settle the matter. Marika Tola Bajakaya, Membra Gadaga Ledebosata, those that are in need of papers to settle down in other countries. I call forth favor. I command mercy to work on your behalf. I command mercy. I command favor. Receive jobs. Receive jobs. Receive contracts. Receive a miracle. Receive favor. Receive increase. Receive enlargement. Man no kidaba. 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 Ereba sukalaraba. Babre de de lerebo shakayada. 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 Man no lobo sotalaraba. Thank you, my father. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. If you believe it is done, let that amen be a final amen. amen. Open your hands and be in the receiving position. And as I begin to declare, just be receiving. Believe you receive and you shall have. So as I declare, just receive. Somebody say, I receive. Shout it very loud, I receive. Let's use the Greek word. Say, I lambano. Yeah, the Greek word is more forceful than English. Lambano is not just receive. Lambano is I take. I seize it. I take it. I grab it. Every sick body be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. From your head to the soles of your foot, be healed. Every organ be corrected. Be corrected. Blood be corrected. Eyes be corrected. Hearing be corrected, heart be corrected, liver be corrected, kidney be corrected. In the name of Jesus, blood be corrected, blood be corrected. Receive creative miracles, creative miracles, creative miracles. Jobs be released, employment be released, promotion be released, career be released, investors be released, jobs be released, business be released. Money is released. Money is released. Money is released. Money is released. Fruit of the womb is released. Twins released. Triplets released. Receive in the name of Jesus. Life partner be released. Life partner be released. Life partner be released. Za, 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 za. Sister, receive wisdom. Receive direction. Know what to do. Do the need for. 
brother receive wisdom receive direction know how to dress know how to speak know what to do in the name of jesus i decree and declare by the favor of god your business is established your dreams are established your vision is established your career is established receive promotion receive promotion receive promotion receive promotion right now as i'm speaking people are remembering you for good receive it in the name of jesus we come boldly to the throne of grace we obtain mercy we find grace we obtain mercy to help in time of need wherever there was a need in this request receive supply receive mercy receive grace and for everyone connecting to us receive supernatural revelation the eyes of your understanding are enlightened we break the hold of satan over families that are not saved we break the hold of satan over families that are not saved we break the hold of satan over religion and tradition we break the hold of satan over superstition now we command the real revelation of god be released to that family we send harvesters to harvest that family to harvest that man to harvest that woman to harvest that boy to harvest that girl satan get your hands off in the name of jesus we declare salvation we declare salvation and for those that have lost things we declare restoration you're blessed beyond the cost things are falling in place we command there to be a shift a movement we generate power we generate power we generate power that arranges and rearranges things in the name of jesus now i declare a release of many sided testimonies many sided testimonies many sided testimonies many sided testimonies receive it in the name of jesus it is done it is done it is done in jesus precious name if you believe it is done let that amen come with a shout and a clap celebrate and set prayers oh glory welcome back ladies and gentlemen welcome back oh my goodness what a service what a time of learning a time of unlearning and a time of relearning the word of his grace brother paul says i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you your inheritance among the sanctified the word has come with clarity please don't go away if there's anything that was wrong in your life, the word of God has gone forth to fix it. I rebuke sickness. I rebuke pain. I rebuke confusion. I rebuke discomfort. Now, receive healing. Receive a miracle where you need one today. In the name of Jesus, receive a miracle. I clear every confusion out of your life. We rebuke fear and the hold of darkness is broken in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I'm excited. Now listen very carefully. I want to encourage you. I have a lot of books like you can see them displayed on the screen. All of these are resources written painstakingly to equip you, answer your questions, and bring you clarity of explanation of the Word of God. Shoot email to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com and we'll respond to you properly and give you all the information you require to acquire these books. You can order them from our office, either the books, the CDs, or the DVDs. Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Shoot us a mail today with your orders, and we will ensure that we reach out to you today. If you're in a city where there's no church, where the message of Christ like this is preached or taught, that is already an opportunity for you to serve Jesus by getting involved with ministry. This is the way it works. All you need to do is shoot us a mail. We will take time and equip you and prepare you to begin an extension of our church ministry called a campus where other believers in your locality can assemble with you in your own venue and learn together with you the message, pray with you, and together all of you can reach out to more people with the truth of the gospel. Or you're in a place where you desire to just belong to the campus, shoot us a mail with your location today. We'll connect you to the nearest campus to where you are of our ministry. It always a joy to serve you the grace of God. Always a joy to bring you clarity, to equip you, to build you up in the knowledge of Christ. 
I'm excited today. Looking forward to hearing from every one of you today. And don't forget to stay tuned for the next broadcast that comes up in a few hours from now. Share with people about what God is doing on this platform. And until we connect with you again, enjoy the grace of Christ and be blessed. Amen. Station.